All right, Lawton. So we're back doing yep. this experiment again. Deja vu, huh? <laughs> and we told our viewers there'd be a big surprise, and the big surprise was we don't think oleic acid is needed, right? No, we do not. We certainly do not. The, the paper we read uh, made it sound like oleic acid was very necessary to to the uh, principle behind this, but we really don't think it is. So last video we made a maze, we 3D printed the maze, mm -hmm. we used food dye and we made sodium hydroxide with oleic acid yep. and hydrochloric acid and it solved the maze. Yeah. And you then came up with a theory that something was not needed. Yeah, right, right, I did. I thought the paper over explained a phenomenon that I thought could be more easily explained by a much simpler phenomenon. So what happened when we did it without the oleic acid with just the food dye? Yeah, when we did it without the oleic acid, it did exactly the same thing. It worked no great. No difference at all. It worked fantastic. So at that point, like, we felt like, all right, this oleic acid is not needed. But the food dye had a surfactant in right. it, right? Oh yeah, yeah. It was propylene uh, glycol. It, it probably did. Propylene glycol, which is commonly used in most food dyes, especially liquid food dyes. So I went out and I bought this, which is RIT. It's a, basically a powdered clothing dye that's used to dye like tie-dye uh, clothes and whatnot. And the reason we did this was not to disprove oleic acid was needed because we pretty much showed it wasn't, but just to see if the surfactant was needed. Right, The right. propylene glycol was needed because this is powder, so this has none of that. It's just basically a salt-based coloring, that's all it is. And you emailed uh, one of the professors at UC Irvine and he yeah. also gave some advice, right? Yep, I emailed one of my uh, professors. He's a very smart guy. Uh, I said, you know, I've been doing this experiment um, with oleic acid. It's an oleic acid maze. I linked him the uh, article and everything. And I said, I did it without oleic acid and did the same thing. So, what gives? He said, well, you know, there's a couple things. He said, well, make sure your, your maze is clean. He said, oleic acid is very surface active uh, molecule. So I said, all right, print a new maze. So I printed a new maze. Um, I'm using distilled water, which I would use last time also, by the way. So we've got a new maze. This beaker has never had oleic acid in it. Uh, we have Brand new beaker, right? Yep, brand new beaker. Never had oleic acid in it. And we have a surfactant free um, clothing dye, and we'll see if it does the same thing. Let's do it. Let's see yep. if it works. Let's try it. Let's get to it. So it worked mm -hmm. yep. and we tested it without the acid and it just went through all the paths. Yep. yep. So what mechanism do we think this was that so, caused it to work? So the mechanism that we think our maze is doing right now without oleic acid is just a pH gradient. I think the migration of the hydrogen ions from one side of the maze to the other is creating some sort of a flow that's pushing the dye through. Uh, this contrasts with the paper that we referenced uh, in the oleic acid uh, portion of the video, where we believe that the actual mechanism for that is different than ours. In that case, the dye is actually being driven through the maze by a surface tension gradient caused by the different protonation rate of the oleic acid in the maze. It's still possible, we haven't ruled out right, that if we had a little bit of acid but no flow, it's still possible that the oleic acid could create enough of a surface tension gradient to cause the flow. We don't know, right? Yeah, we, we don't know. It's called the Marangoni effect. It's a pretty well documented effect. I mean, we haven't tried it, so we're going to try it again and uh, see if we can produce that effect for you guys on camera. But I think the important thing is that you do not need the, the Marangoni effect to solve no. the maze no. with dye. 
Right. You just need to create the BH gradient. You don't need to buy like acid or anything like that. You can just do a simple acid base reaction and pour your dye in and you got to solve the maze. I'm just surprised no one tried that out and several yeah. other people made videos on that and, yeah. and tried it out. So. Yeah, so it's, it seems like such a simple thing that no one's tried yet, So, but it does work. So. Well, I was a big surprise initially when we realized that you didn't need it, but I think we would have been surprised if it, if it didn't work. So that was fun. Oh yeah, that was really, I enjoyed it. That was really fun. All right, everyone. Well, thanks for, for watching another Chem Talk video, and we have a lot great more experiments and elements coming up, so hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for experiments, elements, interviews with very, very cool people, maybe some more authors and Nobel laureates. So we'll see you all soon. All right, take care, guys. See you next time.